Hello, everyone, and welcome to the most prominent podcast for your new Japan Pro Wrestling content. This is Chris's Chaos, only at Channel Cortez 33. I am your host, Chris Cortez, and right now I'm a little humbled. A little humbled because Nights 15 and Nights 16 delivered some conclusions that I did not expect to go down, okay? Things like Tetsuya Naito being eliminated. Things like Sonata being eliminated. New Japan taught us a lot of lessons. We knew going into this they were going to stick to their guns in terms of new generation, but also current generation. And I expected them to push maybe one of the three musketeers. And sure enough, they did. But also, I expected them to stick by Sonata. Now, I, I, I get it. I mean, I've learned that, you know, if, if they don't feel like they need to shove somebody down your throat, they won't. Because it was pretty obvious. It was definitely obvious that Sonata was not quite on the level in terms of fan favorites that, you know, around Japan that, that, that maybe they were, they were expecting. I mean, he's, he's still a fan favorite. He's still looking great. He's still doing a lot. Maybe it's just not his year. That's all there is to it. So they're going to push it for another year. You know, he's, he has to prove himself. It's not like we're going to forget that. We're not going to forget about what's, you know, been taking place in terms of uh, the, uh, here, let me get this mouse pad a little bit closer. That's what I need to do. Yes. But it's not like, excuse me, just get this thing get closer to me. Get in there. Yeah, there we go. All right, look, it's not like they don't, you know, believe in him. They don't have faith in him or anything. It's just that they, it seems like they do read the fans a lot more than you would think uh, a WWE would. Um, of course, nowadays, they've definitely been paying more attention to the fans' reactions and, and interests. I mean, Triple H has, has, his, has his thumb on the pulse. But in terms of, in terms of, you know, thinking that, that that was their guy. I, I, I'm I definitely going to say I was wrong on that for at least this year, okay? But that doesn't mean they don't have plans for him in the future. That doesn't mean they're not going to go with him down the road. I still think that he is, you know, worthy of a, of a championship run, much like the one he had, and, 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 and a chance to do it one more time. <clears throat> I, I, I definitely think... More so now than ever. Let me drink some of this coffee. My throat's getting a little dry. <clears throat> I definitely think that Kanosuke Tsukeshita belongs in New Japan Pro Wrestling. I'm going to stick to that one. I don't care what any AEW fan thinks. I'm sorry. They, you may love him. Maybe a mark for him. Maybe a fanboy. But they're not use, using him quite the same. I don't care if he's beating K- Kenny Omega. I don't care if he's beaten Will Ospreay. They have put what? How many? How many titles have they put on this guy? How many? How many um, headlines has this guy? How many main events has this guy? Uh, you know, headlined. Seriously, he's not. He's not being respected like he probably would be respected in New Japan. He would be the guy. So there's that. Um, and I want to, of course, Saber. I mean, Saber, like, I thought he would even, like, drop this one to Stan. No, he took it to the next level. He is leading the entire G1 with 14 points. Definitively gets the bye. Finley, as I expected him to get into the playoffs, I didn't expect him to lead the playoffs, but he did. He's leading the B block at 12 points. I wasn't expecting Jeff Cobb to get eliminated, but he did. And I sure as hell wasn't expecting Great O'Conn to win and beat Tetsu Unido and somehow make his way into the playoffs. Good for him. I really wanted him to do well. I wasn't expecting him to do that well. Out of the first four losses, coming back with five wins. Um, yeah, he was or like at least what six six wins in a row. Is that what happened with Connor? That's what it looked like. So he's he's golden, you know. 
I was very, very impressed with Great O'Conn's performance tonight. Um, well, I, okay, so I watched it last night, went to bed, woke up this morning, watching it, going to do this review. I know that the quarterfinals were yesterday, and I'm going to cover them. I'm going to watch them. The only two matches I need to watch. And if I know the finals are on the 18th, so I'll, I'll be live for that. But I'll be following the, 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 the finals. I'll just go right into it. But as far as the semifinals, um, I should be able to catch up and do them today, right after they go on. So I'll, I'll watch the quarters. I'll watch the semis, and then bam, we're in. So that, and that works. That's that. That's good enough for me. So we'll make predictions on what I think is going to happen. Of course, I told you I'm dead wrong. I could be dead wrong about this. The way New Japan are not as predictable as AEW and WWE. Last year, I, I was very, very, you know, much thinking, well, Osprey was going to win. I wanted Naito to win, but I was thinking they were going to give it to Osprey. Then we come to find out that Osprey is going to, to AEW that changes everything. You know, I was thinking maybe Okada would win, go up against Sonata. Naito was looking like the least likely to win, um, and he and he made his way into it. They tell good stories with twists and turns. Uh, nobody would have expected Great Okada to win this one, uh, to get into the playoffs. Shingo was 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 a crowd favorite, and I'm glad he made it. He's he is the older generation, and. Saber, I mean, it's it is definitely his time. If he's not going to win this one, he's he's going to win. He's probably due to win this one. Now that Sonata's been taken out, it's pretty much down to Saber. But how much how much stock are they putting into Yoda Suji? I I had a feeling they were not going to let this guy go. I didn't know how they were going to get him into the tournament, and sure enough, taking out Jeff Cobb, okay, made all the difference. Very impressive. And then same with Kanosuke Takeshi to take out Ren Narita. Was impressive. I, I loved I loved the B block right now more than than the A block. The B block just kind of met my expectations. It, it was unpredictable at first. It started going different ways. And it was still unpredictable to the very end. With Yoda Suji taking out the leader of the B block throughout most of the, the round robin. It was impressive. So, great Okan. United Empire is he now the considered the leader of the group? I would still give it to Jeff Cobb. I would still give it to Jeff Cobb. Jeff Cobb has a little bit more diplomacy, a little more like a uh, ambassador, uh, more of the ambassador role. You know, is is Great Ocon perhaps the prime minister of the United Empire? That says that remains to be seen. So let's get into these matches. Okay, so. I'm going to go ahead and pull up some information. Now, night 15, August 12th, City Hall Plaza, Nagaoka, and Nigata. Niigata. Beautiful place. Good crowd. Very good crowd. We're going to get into the first match, okay? First singles match, that is. Cal Newman versus Gabe Kidd. Uh, <laughs> This one lasted about four minutes and 51 seconds. I wasn't expecting much. There's not a lot of going riding on this match. So it was impressive, though, to, to hear that Newman is only 21 years old. He has got a future ahead of him if he keeps this up. As long as he keeps himself healthy and grows, and develops, he's got a very, very bright future ahead of him. Got to drink my good coffee. I'll try to remember to mute the mic next time. And he goes right off the bat, goes after uh, Gabe Kidd with a suicide dive. Flying knee off the post <clears throat> to the rope. He, we get a running drop kick, stomp, super kick. Eventually, Kid catches him with the back suplex off the rope. Uh, chop and Sue's lariat, pin attempt, springboard drop kick by Newman. Already both are down. Uh, Takedown kick, moonsault, pin attempt by Newman. Kick, Kid absorbs the kicks. They take it to the fourth gear. Nice German from Newman. Misses the Oz cutter twice. Twice. Kid hits two power drivers and it's over. Need I say more about this Oz cutter finisher for Cal Newman? Uh, I, 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 I've, bef I've beaten this thing into the ground at this point. Newman needs to 
get his own finisher. Okay? Call it like the one and only or the, the genuine, like the definitive finisher of, of Callum Newman. His and only his. <laughs> Kid breaks out of the chair. Breaks out the chair. He starts striking some dudes. Random. Of course, young buck, young lions, officials, dudes. And pile drives Newman on the chair, reclines on the chair with his feet still on, on the still body of, of Callum Newman. Kid is a savage. He's as savage as it gets in pro wrestling. <laughs> uh, there's definitely going to be a program between these two. Uh, looking forward to seeing that. And of course, Hanari joins commentary, which makes me wonder what's going to happen. That started to raise some eyebrows. What's going to happen in the main event with Great Okan and Tetsuya Naito? Because that's his boy. That's Khan is Hanari's boy in United Empire. You don't want to lose in front of your boy. No. And I'm, in fact, the, the way I've seen, I've been looking a lot at the commentating. It seems like when there is a, a faction member on the commentary table. In the English table, like it seems like that guy wins, okay. When 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 a colleague of theirs is on the commentary table, they tend to win. So it's Sonata versus Zack Saber Jr. Sonata he's at eight points, Saber's at twelve. Nari says Saber is the best technical wrestler alive today. That's not, a, you know, that's that's pretty pretty complimentary. When Anari's United Empire Saber is the mighty don't kneel faction. So they start off with some chain wrestling. It's roll up city, baby. A lot of roll ups. Sonata, uh, he gets the closest to getting the three count. Uppercut, forearms, exchange. Zach feels the pain in his arm. This is not his type of match. At first. So Sonata perhaps trying to keep Saber out of his element. It's looking good for, for Sonata. Octopus applied, it's broken. We do get a drop kick and plancha by Sonata. Twisted out at some point back in the ring by Saber. After blocking a uh, lift attempt. Let me go ahead and get my water. Hope to goodness I'm not I'm not getting like some sort of cold or anything. I don't think that's happening. I just I've definitely been definitely been um, doing a lot of uh, recording because it's G1 and a lot of watching. And of course, it's early in the morning. Just kind of woke up, but it's cool. It's Friday. My wife's off. We're gonna hit up the the wine fest. It's gonna be nice. So twisted out by Saber after blocking a uh, uh, some sort of lift attempt by Sonata. Drop kick to the knees by Sonata. Magic screw. Kick up Sonata. Wizard missed. Gets the dragon screw. He attempts the moonsault. Lands on his knees. And Saber holds on. Transitions to the, the uh, arms for the submission. Saber puts on a clinic. Okay, from using his legs to his arms. Back to his legs. Back to his arms. All the while stretching Sonata's arms to like unnatural positions. Until Sonata finally makes it to the ropes. Kick set from Saber. Clearly his moment in the match, but not for long as Sonata is fighting back. Drop kick, drop kick. Super Bridge City. They're all the roll ups to the bridge. Can't tell you, you know, can't say it more. Big shining wizard by Sonata. Eventually, Cold Skull. No. Almost a deadfall. No. Zach Driver. Yes. For the win, Saber, 14 points. Sonata couldn't even get into this. And the fans are loving Saber as he, he goes through the crowd. They love him, all right? They're all about this guy. They think he's so cool. Um, and they must appreciate him for, he definitely could belong, he could be a stable in any promotion, specifically AEW, most likely like AEW, TNA. But he's really his home is really New Japan Pro Wrestling, and the fans know it. That is like his home. You know, he can go to Rev Pro all he wants, but his his real home is New Japan Pro Wrestling. And he's been there for quite some time, and he's earned the right to, to, to win this G1 cl Climax. 
So we get to Jake Lee versus Shingo Takagi. Okay, I had a feeling Takagi was going to win this one. It was a sweet victory. Um, and I, you know, it could have gone either way because Lee was definitely brought on the attack. Um, we got to see a real vicious side of Lee as he was enraged at the loss. And this one went about 13 minutes and 49 seconds. A little, It was shorter than the Sabre Sonata match, which was 15 minutes and 44 seconds. So these two are somewhat close. A few couple more minutes going to Sabre and Sonata. They lock up. It's a clean break. A little mockery to Takagi. Big kick from Lee. Mockery pin with the bow. Chop from Shingo in the shoulder tackle. Takedown. Elbow drops. Senton. Lee lifts Shingo onto the ropes and knees him. Outside, Lee sends Takagi to the barricade. Some vicious attacks on the apron. And that's what Lee is. Uh, a vicious individual. Let me just say. Uh, he is the, I, I'm telling you, he's the second coming of, of uh, um, Shinsuke Nakamura with those kicks. And that the, 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 the length of his reach. Okay. Shingo back up, but then kick back down. Dragon screw by Shingo, followed by the strikes in the corner. Another reverse whip into the knee. Shingo lifts Lee for the brain buster. Two count Takagi for Going for it, like he was about to say, you know, it's Takagi time, but he gets put in the headlock. Last couple of matches, he, he has not been able to say that. And, and that's that's probably appropriate considering the importance of these matches and how hard their opponent, his opponents are going to attack. Uh, gets him right in a headlock. Drives Lee uh, to the corner, does Chicago, uh, Shingo Takagi, and a judo throw to the pumping body. Strikes exchange, pumping bomber off the ropes. Both are down. Shingo up, but kick twice and back suplex. We get pin attempts. Lee up with that smile. Hits the knee. He even hits the face break. But he's caught to a Death Valley driver. Almost hits the face break. That's right. He gets caught by the leg. Lariat in the corner. Superplex. Lariat does not take Lee down. Another one. Strikes exchange. One more pumpy bomber. And the one, two, three. That was it. That's all she wrote. Lee's enraged. He's shoving the ref, the bellkeeper. He's pissed. He thought it was a quick count. Shingo bows. Um, and he's in good spirits. Lee does not take kindly to that. He thinks he's being disrespected. He pissed. Runs back in the ring. And even Shingo backs away like, oh, shit, no, I'm not trying to, you know, I'm too hurt right now. I mean, it was it was kind of uh, <laughs> hard to watch because Shingo was just probably in the, in the happiest mood and he just wanted to, feel good and, and show a little bit of respect in a somewhat lighthearted manner. But yeah, you don't do that to Lee when he's pissed off. This guy is crazy bastard. Okay. What he wants to be. He's been, he's cool, calm, collected, but you could tell there is a rage burden inside this guy. Uh, he attacks Shingo. Knees the hell out of him. He's backing away. Shingo's uh, in, but at this point he needed evil or Naito to lose. And uh, he got his wish. Both of them lost. I don't think he. I don't think he was. He wanted Naito to lose. Obviously, that's his Lij brethren. And also, he wants to kind of see what happens between them in a rubber match. Both have it one over the other. So he. I think he wanted Naito to win for multiple reasons. We get Shota Umino versus Evil. This was the one I expected Evil to lose in order to get booted out, and he did. Umino against all odds. Against like five different members of of House of Torture. Okay. Even the Tokyo pimp, Yojiro Takahashi, showed up. Yeah. Now, uh, I love um ta- uh, I've always I've always like, you know, I've got have to look up because Takahashi, from my understanding, of course, it's it's a very um it's a very common last name in Japan. So, you know, you're not going to ask, you know, two people named with the same last name as Jones. Oh, are you guys related? Uh, necessarily. Um, but if they were, it would be kind of, it would be such a cool uh, ongoing story between the two because they could not have gone farther from, they, they, could have, they couldn't be walking more different paths. Hiromu Takahashi and Yujiro Takahashi. It would be like the Ujiro would be like the older brother who just went down a life of of decadence. 
and and dismay. <laughs> it, it was great. I was uh very much uh interested. I always I always get I always pop for Ujiro because he's old school bullet club and uh he just I could just tell he's got that that old school New Japan pro wrestling mentality. And when I say old school, I, I do mean like, you know, maybe like one or two decades, you know, maybe like 10, 10 years ago, 10, 15 years ago. So he's old school in, in, in that regard. So, but against all odds, Umino, he takes out evil. He wins. Okay. Um, at some point, he, evil comes out. Kanemaru and uh, the, the announcer in their in their uh, possession, forcing the announcer to get on the mic and read this piece of paper that Evil has, basically saying that Umino is too scared to lose. He knows he's going to lose, so he's not going to come out to fight Evil. Evil, um, sure enough, Umino does come out and he attacks Evil, slams into the barricades. Evil in the rings begging Umino to back off, which uh, he doesn't. You know, starts stomping on him. Hard Whip uses the pad to expose it. Uh, and Umino runs right into it. Beautiful evil uh, tactic. Then outside to the barricades, evil on the mic to spew his nonsense to the chairs. More shenanigans from evil gives the shirt to the ref so that he can whip out a rope and choke Umino with it. It's fantastic. Um, Umino back up, but sends uh, sent to the outside back in. Pin attempts, chops, Umino fired up. So evil with the eye rake. But Umino with the nice drop kick, back elbows, and a running elbow. We get a suplex by Umino to the bridge. Fish, well, more or less fisherman suplex bridge. Only two, though. Drop toe to the DDT on the apron. Textbook Umino now. Umino's in control. Drop kick from the top. Suplex near fall. Uppercuts. Umino drop kicks. The ref inadvertently. Uh, Umino drop kicks the ref. As soon as that happens, you know what's coming. It's the dick toe go, man. And the Kanemaru comes for the triple attack. Magic killer. Kanemaru counts a pin. Uh, he counts a pin. And I was just like, what? I, I, I you know, didn't see it was Kanemaru. I just like kind of heard it. And I was like, this is not happening. But, uh, and the and meanwhile, Dick Togo is ringing the bell. So, great stuff from the House of Torture. <laughs> and then... New ref in. Umino hits a tornado DDT on Evil. He's able to apply the STF in the middle of the ring. Show. Out of nowhere. With the wrench. He attacks. He's back. And, and, and who's, who's next? The Tokyo Pimp Yujiro Takahashi. Shoves Umino into the new, the new ref. We get an onslaught. We get dick to dick contact. Sakamoto, I believe the original ref back in, but only a two count for Evil. Ruthless. Juice. DDT. By Yujiro Takahashi. Still only two. Sakamoto, the referee, is taken out again. Tanahashi comes in to save Umino. President Tanahashi. He evades the dick sand and the whiskey mist. Sling blade to Kanemaru takes out uh, Takahashi. Evil with a low blow to um, Tanahashi. Yeah. Umino with the diamond cutter on Evil. After he was lifted up. Red shoes of all people. That's right. Shota Umino's father. Comes into the ring. He's going to call it right down the middle. Get some Shota chance. Running knee to the back of Evil. Trident. Near fall. Only two. Fair count by Red Shoes. Umino hits the key in the ignition. He's pushed to the exposed rope. And then a lariat from Evil. Running lariat. Still only two for Evil. Everything is evil. Blocked. Strikes an insiguri by Umino, and he eventually hits Blaze Blade. Evil pushes Red Shoes. Gets the low blow in. Evil Rider. Still only two. Everything is evil. Blocked. And again, and we get everything is Umino. So, Umino able to use Evil's finisher, and Evil uses Umino's finisher. We get an Emerald Explosion. Okay. That's, a, I believe, a Hiromu Taka Tanahashi move. And a Death Rider. Beaten Evil, now Naito or Khan just has to win, and the A block is set. And we get Tetsuya Naito versus Khan. This was the one I was hoping to God. I, I had it something in my feeling that Khan was going to win this one. I, I, I didn't want to believe it. So I was, at, at, and I, I didn't think that until the match was about to start, and I was like, hmm, don't know what's going to happen. 
And I was on the edge of my seat for this one, especially obviously towards the end. Yeah, big Nido chance, big Nido chance. And Hanare on the is a little uh, maybe uh, upset about the, the chance. He's ashamed to think that 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 Khan will not win this match. Roll up. We get a quick roll up right off the bat by Naito. Atomic drop, slam to the pad. It's textbook traditional wrestling from Naito. Khan drives Naito to the corner, double chops. Takes a seat on the champ. Axe handle to the back. Naito reversal whip to the barricades and Khan again hits the other barricade. Back in the ring, we get the knee leg lock by Khan. Naito to the ropes. Pin attempts followed by knees. Khan slams the knee to the mat. Knee to the Again, a knee to the knee. We know where he's targeting, clearly. We know we'll know that Naito's knees are, are, are kind of, they've, they've taken a lot of, they've used up a lot of miles. Naito comes back with strikes, but Khan continues the assault right back to the knee. Double wrist armbar and the legs locked. Rope break, arm drag by, drag by Naito, and the drop kick to the leg. Breathing room for, for Naito. Chance up again. The back up. Arm drag, back elbow. Amp drop kick, all from Naito. We get a whip to the corner, back elbow, then the knee to the back using the ropes as re- leverage. We get that long, drawn out neck breaker, pin attempt. Only two. Naito applies the cravat. Khan quickly fights it off and delivers a fireman's carry. Judo toss. A couple judo arm drags and a back to the leg. Tornado DDT by Naito out of nowhere. He grabs the arm and delivers the elbow to the neck. It does that several times. We know that move as he sets up for Destino. On the rope, though, hits Esperanza, the spiked DDT fashion. German suplex by Khan, back to the leg, applies the leg in a variation of what appears to be what they were calling a grapevine. I mean, he's just tying him up all over the place. We get a rope break, pump shot from Khan, another big kick. Just hard strikes, essentially. Arm and elbows to the next. Big suplex, big kick. Get an iron claw from Khan, countered to a victory roll-up by Naito. The fought, the sorry, the claw is being fought off. Inseguri into a very good Destino. I didn't think it was going to be the Destino to win this, but it looked good. Only two. Destino again gets caught to the Blade Runner. Uh, you know the the setup, the Blade Runner to the Eliminator. I was like, this can't be it. And it, sure enough, it was one, two, three. Great O'Conn has done it. I gotta give him his flowers. I mean, he he did it. I'm not like I was. I was shocked. I was shocked at Sonata losing. I was almost. I was pretty. I was kind of pissed that Naito would not be able to defend his G1, you know, win. At least in the tournament, he has several guys. Naito now has several guys to to defend his title against if he wants to make it to Wrestle Kingdom. He's got to fight. Zack Sabre Jr. He's got to fight Evil, who still kind of technically holds a win over him. Even though it was kind of, you know, obviously a bullshit match with all the, the dis- distractions and the uh, interference. We He definitely, though, has, has, has you know, something to... He's got a little bit of uh, business to take care of with, with Sabre, Shingo Takagi, and now Great Khan. All three of these guys are due a match with Naito, a championship match. And I think he can do it. I think he can beat all three of these guys. Ex- unless, I think he can beat all, every guy that gets put in front of him until he gets the G1 Climax winner at Wrestle Kingdom. That that would make sense. Uh, it just goes to show that Naito, Naito is probably never going to win another G1 Climax. Does not mean he cannot defend that title very successfully. This is a very hard tournament on everyone. They put on, you know, incredible matches. Day after day after day for nine straight matches with like a day in between each match. Sometimes back to back nights like this, like um, the one that we're going to see from, to, you know, the the 14th to the 15th. It's, it's, it's crazy. But it is their workload. It's it's their it's like their busiest time of the of the year. They get to work like this. And, it, and it's what most wrestlers do. They go from town to town to town. Wrestling in very similar matches, but they're 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 hard fought matches. So I don't think that we'll see another win, a G one climax win for Naito. It's 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 done. But he's still the champion, 
and he can still defend that title, and he will, and he will get wins. So I'm not too worried about Naito. Just wanted to, just was expecting him to have a match with with uh, with Shingo in the quarterfinals, and that's okay. So Red Okan, he gets on the mic, he says, "Bow down, peasants of Naga Oka." He says, "We'll always turn things around." That is what the, this empire is about. We've realized something in this G1. We hated pro wrestling at one point, but we are having fun again. We will turn things around. Hail us peasants. So he's, he's, he's one of the peasants, he feels. He, you know, he's, he's feel like he hasn't gotten the respect. He's been treated like a peasant, and now he is getting, he's starting to have a little more fun. And this is great. This is great. He did, he's, done, he's, he's worked so hard, this guy, okay, with his presentation, his abilities, and clearly his, his athleticism. Okay, so he deserves all the credit where it's due. I definitely checked out some of the backstage commentary after this one, and I really enjoyed it. I will be doing that more, much more often. I didn't realize that they they, they provide subtitles as well, and I love it. Um, translations, that's very, very uh, helpful. Um, Naito said, normally you don't talk backstage. I have something to say. This year, the top three from the block move on, and I couldn't. I'm last year's winner and current champ, and I finished with this crummy record. However, that's just where I stand at the moment. Nothing to be ashamed of. So, who made it out of A Block? Saber, uh, Shingo, Khan. All three beat me. I'll be looking to see who wins of the three. He's expecting one of those three to win. So, my G1 is over, but my summer moves on Cabral. I think that he's going to... I mean, he's kind of hinting at the fact that, hey, you guys beat me. Let, let's get a match. You know, after all this hoopla is said and done. So... We had a great promo from David Finley talking about how he's going to beat the crap out of VLP. And he was on point. Uh, go back and, if you can, go back and watch the, the, the Finley promo on ELP. Excellent, excellent promo. Uh, setting up for, for the Night 14 match. Um, ELP also, you know, responds. Well, he has a good promo too, but it's just not on the level of Finley. The emotion and his delivery was, was 10 out of 10. Saber compares Sonata as uh, Saber gets, um, you know, he he talks about, you know, Sonata being the top of this generation, telling him to stop effing around. Zack Saber Jr. He's like, what's going on? Where's your dream? He's, he's just kind of like surprised that Sonata didn't give him more. And I am too. I mean, I, I, I expected these two to have a main event match at Wrestle Kingdom, not this Wrestle Kingdom coming up, but the following year. Um, so Saber though saying I am, I'm, I'm the top of this generation this is my time the, the championship is coming home I did make a reference to the England's, England's uh, soccer team uh, the Euro Cup team I guess and he was like unlike them I'm actually bringing the trophy home the song may be about them but I'm actually bringing the trophy home <laughs> to Rev Pro <sighs> when, he, when he goes there but we've got night 14, and I can finally go over this 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 uh, tournament list. I'm very excited. I was very much anticipating it. But this night was intense. Okay. Hiroki Goto versus Hanari. I had a feeling it was gonna be this was gonna be Hanari's way. Hanari was gonna take him out. He's doing it for his, you know, technically he's, he's doing it for for people like his, like Jeff Cobb, like Khan. He's still he's work and he's doing it for himself. He's not gonna just Lay down for Goto. As much as everybody wanted Goto to make it to the playoffs, not going to do it. Goto at eight had to win. They lock up, clean break, hammer lock Goto. They crash into each other. Goto knocks Hanari down. Shoulder tackle. Hanari slam down. Senton follow up. Barricades. Back in the ref. They're attacking each other in the barricades. Back in the ring. Hanari in control. Until a misdirection Larry by Goto. We get the whip, Irish whip to the corner, spinning heel kick, back suplex, kick from the top by Hanare, lariats in the corner, Goto catches Hanare into Ushigoroshi, forearms exchange, kicks by Hanare, inverted GTR and lariat by Goto. The berserker bomb out of nowhere from Hanare, near fall, rugby, the rugby punt kick by Hanare, sleeper though, out of nowhere by Goto. Get a kick by Goto. GTW, only two. That's that's usually a move he'll use towards the end, so I know this is coming close to the end. B 
big kick, but Hanari hits the rampage near fall. Headbutts are being exchanged. You don't want to go into a headbutt exchange with the big head of Hanare. Okay? Not, you know, not no offense to you, but you, you definitely got uh, a significantly large noggin that I would not want to go headbutt to headbutt with. Especially that hammerhead. He connects it. He makes it sound so good. It's it's impressive. It's very impressive. Um, Streets of Rage, and it's over for Goto. It's over for the match, over for the dream of Goto's G1. Get a very nice applause from the crowd on Goto's way out. This match took about four minutes and 13 seconds. Oh, and by the way, Great Okan's match with Naito, 18 minutes and 57 seconds. One of the longer ones, Shumino with Evil, 19 minutes and 46 seconds. That's because of all the crazy crap that was going on with the House of Torture. So I forgot to mention those. But this one is the shortest um, match of between the both nights, okay? And it was... You know, it was bittersweet. Goto had a hell of a G1, um, but it just wasn't in the cards. We got El Phantasmo versus David Finley. I actually was worried that Finley was going to get taken out because of Phantasmo. There was going to be a huge, uh, a huge feud. But I don't think this is over. You know, unless the OP is on his way out the door, I don't think this is over. There's going to be a little bit more of a feud between these two, perhaps at Wrestle Kingdom. This is leading up to a big, you know, Cap off with uh, with with Finley versus ELP. This one was about twelve minutes and thirty two seconds. Did what it needed to do. Clearly, they're gonna they wanted to push Finley all the way, and they did. And I knew it. And you you can't count him out. There's a good chance this guy will, will make it to the finals. Um, he is primed and ready. His promo work is is perfect. Is on point. His in ring ability is good. It's just, I mean, he's he's a brawler. You know, he's he's just like his father, just on another level. A new generation of, of brawlers and just ruthlessness. Wrestling is into this guy's blood, right? And there's a good chance he's going to the finals. And there's even even more, there's just as good of a chance that he could win. If I, I mean, we could already talk about Sabre versus fin- Finley, but we'll do that when we get to the predictions and the brackets. So... But Finley, he's at 10. He's already in good standing, but he need, you know, this he needs this win to secure. Otherwise, he needs to ca- uh, I believe it was Takeshita and or um he needed uh Takeshita to I don't know, maybe win or either way, it doesn't even matter at this point. Takeshita or Narita, <laughs> one of them, but maybe both of them to lose. I don't know. But this this was a grudge match to say the least. Bell sounds. Thank God that I also was so glad that Finley won just so I didn't have to figure out like what the hell else could happen. They do not run into each other. They they take time. But then the blows come to pass. Uh, clothesline by ELP over the top and the plancha connects. Okay, there is a grudge match between these two the guys because <clears throat> ELP was Bullet Club. <clears throat> For those of you that don't know, David Finley. Taking over the helm, there was a discussion, I guess, on the chats that they weren't going to get rid of Jay White. And ELP was not for get, getting rid of Jay White. But that wasn't in the cards. Of, that wasn't in the plans of, of Finley. So getting um, Jay White out created some automatic dissension between ELP and, and those that weren't happy with it, making David Finley's life more harder as the leader. So he kicked the ELP out. And ever since then, EOP's just kind of had an up and down life uh, in New Japan. Um, getting friends like Tama Tonga and Tongaloa and Onar and Hikaleo. And then having all those friends lose, you know, performing pretty bad in the beginning of the G1 in terms of his win-loss record. He, he, he was performing excellently. Um, but he's been kind of down and out. So, who's he got to blame? He has to blame the man that changed everything in Bullet Club. Got to blame David Finley. And that he was going to beat him within an inch of his life. David Finley said, yeah, no. If you think anyone's going to beat someone within an inch of their life, it's going to be me beating your ass in, in, within an inch of your life. Uh, and, that, and and again, go back and watch that promo. It was sick. It was good. So, can't stress it enough. But things were looking good for ELP. After that plancha, they continue to brawl outside ELP in control until Finley lifts and drops ELP on the chairs. Back in the ring, Finley knees the back of ELP. 
brutal backbreaker by Finley. You get ELP chance for him by ELP. Sit down and stomps by Finley. Camel clutch applied. It's the second time I've seen him do this in the tournament. ELP punches his way out somehow. A couple more elbows. Hits the hurricane. Beautifully. He is an incredible Huracan Rana. Suicide dive outside. Back in the ring. Senton. Moonsault off the ropes. Te- textbook signature. Vintage ELP. Near fall. Irish curse though from Finley. Some offense from ELP. But Finley out of nowhere delivers into oblivion. Okay. It's great the way he was able to just pull that out of nowhere. Uh, near fall. Hard uppercut. Forms from Finley, but ELP feeling the rage. Big shots from ELP. But Finley delivers an Irish curse again. Okay, that's what I'm thinking. Okay, this is, they're giving it to Finley. Near fall again. ELP small package and another another small package or roll up. Kick to the gut and on the shoulders. But rolling elbow from EL, from Finley. ELP hits a brain buster. Kick up by ELP. Sets up for the super kick and it connects, but only a near fall. Goes for CR2, it's blocked. And we get the Finley buckle bomb. But ELP with a power bomb and the CR2. No pin attempt. This was beautiful. Thunder Kiss 86 off the springboard. Looked incredible. I, I could have given it to him then. But Ghetto pulls the ref. That's what I knew. I was like, all right, this is over. Finley's going to win. ELP is distracted. Like, I act like, you know, wh- what the hell is going on? He should have like focused on Finley, uh, who pulls out the shillelagh. Hits Finley at ELP with the shillelagh while the ref's not looking. We get the overkill, and Finley secures his playoff spot. And that is all she wrote for, for that. Man. So, we go on. I mean, this is what it was. This is what I expected. I, I mean, I, I could definitely see these guys have another program, but I, I just don't think that ELP was going to take out Finley just yet. Who knows? Maybe he shows up in the... um. Tournament, the brackets tournament. I, I mean, maybe there's so much going on that he does that. I don't know. May not be his style. So we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. Um, I do see bright things for David Finley in this company. But as far as EOP is concerned, I, I don't know. I mean, he's a great baby face. New Japan loves him. Wondering if he's going to make it to, you know, AEW, make it you know, over the, over the, the pond. <laughs> And go to uh, either WWE or, or, or AEW. I think he'd make a great fit. So, see what happens. Renarita versus Konosuke Takeshita. This one was 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 very good. I swear, whoever, if anyone is doubting Ren Narita's development, they they've got issues. Um, he's truly like a student of the game. And you could see a little bit of Shibata in him, but he's definitely has his own. He's path. He's he's, he's paved his own way, paved his own path, and he gave to to Takeshita. You know, this whole tournament, he's been kind of showing off that he could beat anybody at any time. You never know. And the same thing applied to Takeshita, especially the way the knee of Takeshita played a role in this match. Um, so at the very beginning, um. Evil comes out with Kanemaru. And so Takeshi is basically dragged out by Evil and Kanemaru after Narita shows up. And uh, in order, by the way, in order for Takeshi to, to get through the playoffs, he has to beat Narita. Narita's already at 10. Takeshi is at 8. He beats Narita. And, and it's the other thing. Narita has to beat Takeshi. Or at least get a draw. Or so, you know, a draw would be good. But if he, if he loses to Takeshi, they're tied up at 10 and Takeshi pushes past him. That was a must. So that will happen again at the very end of the, of the night. But let's focus on this. So, uh, you know, at least uh, House of Torch, though, they support one another. They're, they're, they're giving dabs. Evil's already out, but Narita has a chance. They've get, they gave Narita as much of a chance as possible to beat Takeshita. Okay. Call evil what you will, but, you know, when it comes to his brethren, he's not as selfish as one may think. Narita in control for a, about a third of the match, taking Takeshita out, you know, the barricades, the chairs. He wraps the leg of Takeshita around the, the barricades and kicks the barricades. Finally, we get a Russian leg sweep out of order from Takeshita. Narita, he wraps the knee around the post. Well, Bret Hart style. 
course, he didn't put in the figure four like Brett would do. Um, he lifts Kanosuke up just enough to just enough to slam that knee on the mat. Takeshita on the attack with the forearms, but just for the moment. Narita to the eyes, but Takeshita with a German and an exploder. But Narita drop kick to the knees. Takes Narita over the top rope. He cannot run the rope. He can't even run the rope for the over the top splash. Sad. Sad. Big Larry from Takeshita. Laird off the rope to Narita. Narita fights off the wheelbarrow German. Gets caught only for a second. And Narita able to apply a leg lock. Rope break. Narita up top. And Takeshita catches him into a superplex. Kick my Narita. Guillotine choke. Konosuke lifts Narita, but can't do much. Somehow hits that bastard driver. It's a cool move. Cool name. Bastard driver. Togo in the in the distraction. Evil attacks T- Takeshita. Ref is out. Magic killer. Narita pin attempt. Takeshita launches, launches Narita into the ref at the two count, but that only gives Dick Togo another chance to attack. Back on to Takeshita. We get a uh, chair to Dick Togo. Big elbow to Evil. And the chair hits Evil. So, somehow, Takeshi has avoided all this stuff. Get the guillotine leg drop by Narita. Connects. I like that. I love that guillotine leg drop. He should imply the guillotine choke. Guillotine, he's a guillotine man, this Narita. And another from the top. Near fall. Big shots but from Takeshita. Chop block from Narita. And the knee. Double cross counter to a last ride style. Power bomb looked sick by Takeshita. If anyone can deliver a power bomb, a last ride style, it's this guy. Okay. Leg lock counters Takeshita's elbow. He hits his hand on the mat, almost like he tapped, but just for effect. It was amazing how, like, I, I swear, when he hit that mat, I thought, I was like, no way. He's tapping. No way. I was like, he's not going to let New Japan, like, put him out like that. He's not going out like that. He's not going back to AEW on a tap. So he hits the German suplex, wheelbarrow style. World-class shot, looking like Narita's mouth. Uh, at some point, you know, he he was kept fighting to get that world-class elbow shot. It was beautiful. The way he hit it, Narita, his mouth guard flew out. It was one of the best-looking, like, shots to the face with a forearm, elbow, what have you, that I have ever seen. And it's all thanks to Takeshita and especially big shout-out to Narita. Because the car, his, like his mouth guard flew out. It looked like half his mouth flew out. It was incredible. Um, and we get the man. <laughs> they need to make a gif out of that one. To catch to go to the playoffs, baby. Loving it. Loving it. That was the match of the night as far as I'm concerned. 16 minutes and 48 seconds. Very happy with it. And to catch to, that music, his theme song is killer. I, I don't even know. I've, I haven't been watching nearly as much AEW as I probably should. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go. I'm, I'm going to order a uh, all in. That's all I really want to watch. And, and do a review with Jonathan. But I'm wondering, do they have that music? Because uh, Takeshi, Kanosuke Takeshi's theme song right now is, is, is as good as it's ever been. Uh, and it's, it, you know, he's been rocking it. And I would think that that's his music in AEW. Uh, it's awesome. It's awesome. Um, so he's going to the playoffs, baby. And he very well could go all the way. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. This guy is amazing. You know, he could, uh, they could have a deal where it was like, okay, he's going to be, he's going to be signed to New Japan. He's going to be working with, with us for a while. He could make appearances at AEW, but he's the, he, he's, he's going to be our guy because <laughs> he's amazing. He's amazing. Um, and he just has such good chemistry with the crowd and he just needs some good merch. That's all he needs is some really good merch. He's awesome. He's the alpha, you know? So Jeff Cobb versus Yoda Suji main event. This one. Went about 11 minutes and 36 seconds. I didn't think it was going to go long. These guys are power, big powerhouse players. And at this point, with every, all the surprises, I was like, well, I, you know what? I won't be surprised if Yoda Suji wins. And this, I didn't even really think about it. And it's like, okay, so if Yoda beats Cobb, he takes him out. There you go. Eight to 10 matches makes me think that the underdog, I guess, by points is going to win. And that's what happened. Cobb taken out. So those tiebreaker rules apply. You get a shoulder tackle by Cobb, forearms exchange, schoolboy roll through, and shoulder tackle by Yoda. Spears by Cobb to Yoda in the corner, drop kick by Cobb, stomp denied for Cobb lifted himself. Um, he, he did like a push up. It was pretty cool. While while uh, the you know 
to def- to deflect the, the stomp of Yoda. It's pretty cool to see. He made it look really, really nice. Uh, we get that slam down, moonsault by Cobb, but it lands on the knees of Yoda. Get a big rampage style slam, hammer and sickle, moonsault by Cobb. Yoda, super kick. Big strike by Cobb. Gene Blaster by Yoda. Yoda tries to lift Cobb. We get a big shot from Yoda. Falcon Arrow, only two. Big knee from Yoda. Marlow uh, crash to uh, just lands right into Cobb's lariat. That was cool. The Cobb hits that F5000. Again, nice. Deadly headbutt and a high knee from Yoda, but a big lariat from Cobb. Whip to the ropes, and out of nowhere, you get the Gene Blaster. One more Gene Blaster. Boom. Yoda's in the playoffs. This match wasn't anything like to write, you know, go crazy about, but it was, it did what it needed to do. Um, it really didn't. I mean, they clearly, okay, they're pushing Yoda Suji. They put him in in the main event of the very last night of the round robin. Okay. And out of nowhere, he, he, he beats Jeff Cobb, leader of the B block at, for most of the, of this whole thing to get to the playoffs. So yes, they are definitely putting stock in this particular guy. Okay. They clearly put some stock in Ren Narita, making him look good, defeating a bunch of guys, but he didn't go all the way. And then Shota Umino, able to beat Evil, but for the most part, he got, you know, he was he was unsuccessful. This is their guy, okay, for the future. But current, he's not the current guy, so I don't expect him to win this whole thing. If he does, uh, I, I, wouldn't say, I wouldn't be surprised if he lost to Naito in the G1. I, I just don't see him... Beating, I mean, that would make, I mean, it would be a little ridiculous. Unless the maybe Shingo goes up against Shingo, Shingo gets the title. There's, there's a lot that can still happen. Naito may very well not go to G1. Uh, sorry, go to Wrestle Kingdom as the champion. Who's to say? I, I would like to see it. I think he, need, he deserves this reign. They, they, they took the belt off him. They give it to John Moxley for a little bit, which I love John Moxley, but they shouldn't have done that. They were doing it for, for, for clicks. I, I'm not cool with that, but. That's fine. They gave the belt more or less right back to Naito after a little feud with Evil, between Evil and Mox, and that's fine. Don't take the belt off of Naito until Wrestle Kingdom, all right? There's only about, there's 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 like uh, less than five more months. Give him, keep him the title. Get some good matches in. A few more matches. A champion, it's the last championship run you'll ever have with Naito. Let him get it in. Yoda, Yoda gets on the mic. He says, I will, uh, for, for, for this playoffs, I'm not wrestling as a faction or a generation, but as one man. I like that. The, the, the audience seemed to like it too. Um, I will do what, what no one else can. Are you ready? The G1 is mine. I mean, I almost thought he was going to hit a roll call, uh, which would really raise some eyebrows. Um, and that is your Knights 15 and 16. We are on our way to the playoffs. And let's talk about it. Let's let's get into this. So, you can look up top. I already made a little overlay for this. But we got two guys that are just, they get the buys, Finley and Saber. Okay. Um, do I think that both of them, well, sure enough, they're, so they're going. So it really comes down to Shingo or Great Okan. Um, I think it's going to be Shingo. Shingo's definitely the crowd favorite. And Shingo will give, I think, uh, Sabre the, the coolest match. However, Khan is more of a technical guy. I just don't think that they're... I don't think that Khan and Sabre's abilities both have, are great wrestlers. I don't know how well they will mesh together. I do know that Shingo and Sabre will mesh very well together. Um, so I'm going with Shingo. Not to say that I don't think that Khan could very well go to um, the uh, semifinals. Just I just think that that's the match we're looking for right there is, is Sabre versus Shingo. Okay? That's all that I got to say about that. To Kanosuke Takeshita versus Yoda Suji. Um, this one definitely could go either way because I think David Finley could work with either of these two really, really well. Um, if I'm going to go with anybody, I'm going to go with Takeshita. But they're working this whole knee angle thing where he's so busted up that he may not just may not have enough gas to, to fight Yoda. So there you go. And, and Yoda is clearly the, the new boy, the, their new guy. So they're going to, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if, if Suji goes up against Finley. 
and we get Finley um, versus Suji. I again, I think that it's it's it, this could be a, a case where both buys win. Finley defeats Suji, faces um, the winner of the Shingo versus Saber match, and I think it's going to be Saber, and then or or could be Shingo. That would be a hell of a, of a Wrestle Kingdom. That I mean, he is he is as popular right now as I have ever seen Shingo Takagi. He's coming off of a loss to David to Daniel Brian Danielson. By the way, that's what really pissed me off because because of all all this time the last real match that big match that he had before G one was against Brian Danielson. We need another match between those two. We definitely need a match between those two. Um, out of the six, I really think that Shingo, as far as faces go, could could very well win. As far as the, the like, I think I mean as far as I think who should win, I, it, it would I mean. <laughs> I would want to see Finley as the heel take on Naito. Um, that would be a cool little matchup. I could see. I mean, Saber is the one that seems to be the crowd favorite as well. I'm, I'm honestly, Takeshita, um, least likely to win. I think it might be Great Okan. If he wins, wow, that'd be, that, you know that'd be that'd be awesome. Um, but I think he's the least likely. Suji, while everyone thinks the maybe the most likely right now, is is honestly not quite there. I, I just don't see it yet. Maybe give him a couple more years, you know, give him a little bit more uh, seasoned. Give you know, you know, we need a little bit more of a grittier uh, Yoda Suji. But Saber, definitely, definitely is prime and ready. Finley, just about there. Shingo's been there. Shingo's been there. He's he's been at the top of the mountain only but for a moment. Uh, if anyone deserves it, it's it's Shingo Takagi. So. We're going to get to the, you know, semifinal. I'm going to watch the semifinals. I'm going to watch the quarterfinals. I'm going to get back to you on this. Um, if they show the quarterfinals today, I'll watch that. And then I'll give you a review of both the quarterfinals and the um, semifinals. Uh, if they don't, we'll just talk. I'll just come back and do a little quick review of, of the August 15th card. And that's that'll be it. Um, guys, it's been great. It's been a lot of fun. Um, it's been a good little review. I'm sorry if my throat was a little bit dry. Uh, woke up, you know, couldn't wait to do this review. I was too tired last night. Uh, I'd already done a review that day. I watched a lo- whole bunch of wrestling, and um, I'm just I was just ready to take it take it easy a little bit. Uh, and tonight, not tonight, but this afternoon, when all's said and done, have a nice little glass of red or white, whatever I'm in the mood for. And we'll enjoy the weekend with my wife. Please hit that like or subscribe button at Channel Cortez 33. One more thing. Today, August 16th, is my mom's birthday. It's also my mother-in-law's birthday. I wish her a nice happy birthday on Facebook. And um want to give a big happy birthday to my mom. Happy birthday, mom. 76 years old, if I'm not mistaken. I know. I don't I don't I don't pick I don't keep count. I don't do that. That's disrespectful. So those of you who have a mom's birthday coming up, make sure to wish them a happy birthday. It's a great day to be, uh, you know, born in August. Leos, big shout out to you all. On that note, guys, it's been fun. See you all later. Take care.